Did you know that there are striking resemblances between Rey in Neon Genesis Evangelion and Rey in Star Wars? And that there is one particular biblical figure that could help us understand their ultimate destiny? Let me explain in this crossover analysis to honor Star Wars Day. I'm Father Roderick, I'm a priest and I'm a geek, and I love to share with you the deeper layers and hidden meaning of the stories that we like. So, I'm recording this on Star Wars Day, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. And as you know, I am a huge Star Wars fan, so I had to connect Eva and Star Wars in this video. And even though I don't really know if these stories have had any influence on each other, there are a few surprisingly similar themes in both. Let's start with Rey and Rey. When we first meet them, they seem to be isolated and alone. Parents are absent. No siblings, almost no memories of the past. Their origin and parentage is unknown. Both struggle with their identity. I'm no one, says Rey in Star Wars. Who am I, says Rey in Eva. That is the question that haunts both these Reys, but the mystery of their true origin fuels their quest for answers. So the first time we see Rey in Eva, she is in bandages. This look was inspired by a Japanese song about a white girl in bandages, but it's also an indication of what's under the surface of this seemingly emotionless girl. She is hurt, she is damaged, fragile and still healing. She doesn't seem to have parents or relatives. Her apartment is almost completely empty, symbolizing her loneliness. And this is very similar to Rey in The Force Awakens. She is hurt too by the trauma of having been abandoned by her parents. She doesn't seem to have any friends on Jakku. She is used to survive on her own. Now, because of this, both girls have trouble bonding with others once the story starts developing. Ray's relation to Finn is awkward at first. It seems that she is unable to interpret the status of their relationship. Ray in Eva hardly responds to Shinji's interest in her, as if she doesn't know how to deal with it. In both stories, Ray and Ray meet a troubled young man with clear daddy issues, Shinji and Kylo Ren. Both seem to blame their fathers for not having been there for them. And both girls are almost polar opposites of these guys. Rey in Eva is stoic, emotionally distant, even dissociated. Whereas Shinji displays rage, passion, frustration, depression. Rey in Star Wars shows control. She seems fragile, but she is actually very strong. Whereas Kylo seems strong, but is actually very conflicted, frustrated, abused by Snoke, and full of rage. It is this yin-yang dynamic of two opposite poles that somehow are also bound to one another. So what is the reason for these troubled relationships? It is a common central theme in both Eva and in the Star Wars sequels. If you are hurt, and you hate yourself. You don't dare to bond with others because you are afraid that they will hurt you or you will hurt them. Think of Luke, isolated because of his trauma, unwilling to bond with Rey. Or Kylo, who can only look at others as people to subject to his will or as abusive father figures like Snoke. In Ava, this is described at one point as the hedgehog dilemma. Hedgehogs can't snuggle because they will hurt each other. Most of the characters in Eva struggle with that dilemma. Their inability to relate to others stems from a deep fear of getting hurt again. Both Rey and Rey have extraordinary talents and seem to be connected with a deeper, stronger force that seems to be related to their ultimate destiny. But to find this destiny, they need to understand who they are. Both Ava and Star Wars have similar scenes where these young women are looking into a mirror to see themselves reflected endless times. Are they alone? Are they truly nobodies? Or is there a hidden connection in their past that we still need to discover? Rey in Star Wars is ultimately revealed to have extraordinary ancestry, which explains how she is so connected with the Force. I'm still in the middle of the Eva series, but I get the feeling that there is a similar hidden ancestry of Rey that somewhere is hidden in her mysterious past. Again, I have no idea if these two stories had any real influence on each other, but the archetypical storylines are strikingly similar. And they have something in common with that of a young girl we meet in the Gospels, Mary. Think of it, she too is a nobody. 
and an angel changes her destiny. Her fiancé, Joseph, is confused by these developments, doesn't know how to handle it, and plans on leaving her, until another angel makes it clear that his destiny is bound to hers. Mary's son, Jesus, fights with the forces of evil and darkness that ultimately overpower him and crucify him. He doesn't run away from suffering and death, another major theme in Eva. But his resurrection marks a new beginning. And so Mary is the mother of the new Adam, a herald of a new era. In the final Star Wars movie, The Rise of Skywalker, Rey also becomes a mother figure. She heralds a new era for the Jedi. She is the beginning, the eve of a new future. I wonder if we'll see something similar happening with Rey in Neon Genesis Evangelion. But I'll have to watch more episodes to find out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to my email newsletter. Link is in the bio. And of course, may the force be with you. Follow for more.